Hello and welcome to our video series on trigonometry, our pre-calculus 2 course. As we start this video, I'm going to start like I start every video with a question that kind of guides our discussion in what we're looking at. Trigonometry looks at triangles, but specifically the measure of the angles of those triangles. So the important foundational question as we get started with trig is how do we measure angles. And the most common way angles are measured, the one you're probably most familiar with, is in degrees. The idea is, if I've got a circle on this coordinate plane here, and this circle goes around like so. I can't draw very good circles. Sorry. Uh, we'll start on the far right, and we'll call that 0 degrees. And because somebody decided once, we're going to say circles have a total of 360 degrees. So if I go all the way around the circle back to my original point, we'll be at 360 degrees. And one of the reasons 360 was chosen is we can divide 360 by a lot of things and not have a remainder. We can divide by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. We can divide by a lot of things and not have a remainder. So if I were to divide it in half, halfway around the circle then must be 180 degrees. And half of that then would be 90 degrees. And if I go between 180 and 360, that would be 270 degrees. Another way that we've divided up the circle is we can divide each of these halves into thirds. And so we've got thirds that come out of the circle to points. And these are going to be some common angles that we're going to work with as well. And 1 third of 90 degrees is 30 degrees. So each one of these is going to be 30 more degrees. So it goes 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, which we already have, 210, 240, 270, which we already have, 300, and then 330 and finally 360, which we already have. Now, each 90 could have been split into thirds, but it could have also been split in halves. And so we're also going to have some common angles that are just going to be in the middle, the halves. Half of 90 is 45 degrees. And so counting every 45, we've got 45, 90 on top, 135 degrees, 180 on the left, 225, 270 on the bottom, 315, and finally 360. And so you, these are going to be what we're going to call the common angles that we're going to work with a lot in this course. And you should be very familiar with where they're located on the circle. How many degrees gives you each position on the coordinate plane? Now, the neat thing about degrees in a circle is we can actually spin around the circle several times and end up back at the same spot. So I'm going to number this circle, this unit circle number one. The number two thing we want to talk about with degrees is these things called coterminal angles. Coterminal angles, terminal means end and co means the same. Coterminal angles end at the same place. So if we take this little 30 degree angle here, that 30 degree angle opens up 30 degrees, but we could have also said we're going to open up all the way around the circle 360, and then an additional 30. That's going to give us a 390 degree angle. Notice to go around the circle, we got an extra 360. By adding 360, we ended up back at the same place. But we could also go backwards. You notice that all of our angles have opened. And this might be worth noting, all of our angles 
on this circle, we always open counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is going to be how we measure positive angles. So if we go backwards, always starting from the far left, going backwards, we're going to call that a negative angle. So if 360 is all the way around, 360 minus 30 is negative 330 degrees, gets us to the same ending for that angle, that coterminal angle. So in summary, we can find coterminal angles by either adding or subtracting. Let's just say add or subtract 360 degrees. So for example, if I have a 1,200 degree angle, I could find a coterminal angle with it by subtracting 360 degrees. And that would give me 840 degrees. So 840 and 1,200 are coterminal angles. In fact, I could subtract 360 degrees again, and I would get 480 degrees. And I could subtract 360 again, and that will give us our first angle that's between 0 and 360 of 120 degrees. And what we see is 120 degrees, 480 degrees, 840 degrees, 1,200 degrees. All four of these are all the same coterminal angle. We could even work with a negative number and do a very similar thing. Let's say we've got a negative 800 degree angle. And I want to know what's that equivalent to within that 0 to 360 range, just one rotation of the circle. Well, since this is negative, we're going to add 360 degrees. And that'll give us negative 440 degrees. And if I add 360 again, that'll give me another coterminal angle of negative 80 degrees. And if I add 360 again, we get our first coterminal angle that's between 0 and 360. This is a 280 degree angle. And again, all three of these, negative 800, negative 440, negative 80, all four actually, and the 280 degree angle, all three are all the same coterminal angles. One use of angles and angle measurement in degrees in this case is helping us determine the arc length on a circle. What we're going to do is we're going to use Greek letters to represent angles in this course. So this Greek letter, it's a circle with a line through the center, is the Greek letter theta. If we took theta and divided it by 360, that would give us the proportion of the entire circle that angle covers. And so if we're looking for the arc length, which our textbook uses the letter s, that would be equal to a full arc length, the full circumference of the circle. And the formula for circumference, you should remember from your geometry days, is 2 times the radius times pi. And that's the circumference, or the distance around. So if we have a circle with radius of 3 inches, and the angle of 114 degrees, we should be able to find the arc length that that covers. What I mean by that is we've got a circle. The radius is 3, and there's some 114 degree angle in here. And we want to know how long is that arc that covers that 114 degree angle. And this proportion helps us do it. It's a part over the whole. We have an angle of 114 degrees out of the total 360 degrees. That's equal to the arc length over the total length around the circle. 
which is 2 times the radius of 3 times pi. Well, to solve for the arc length, the s that we want will multiply by 2 times 3 is 6 pi on both sides, leaving just the arc length on the right side. And I'd probably put this in my calculator, leaving the pi, because we always like to leave the exact answer in terms of pi whenever possible. 6 times 114 divided by 360 is going to give us 1.9. So our arc length is 1.9 pi inches. Not too bad there. Now. We've been talking about degrees so far, because degrees is what you're probably most familiar with. However, it's actually a very inconvenient way to measure circles, because the 360 was kind of abstractly decided that 360 is the distance all the way around the circle. Well, who decided that? Well, someone who just decided it was easy to do math with 360. It's much better to use a method that uses the circle we're talking about. So we're going to often in this course, more often than degrees, talk about these things called radians. And this is an angle measured in terms of the radius. And so again, we're going to redraw that circle we started with. I'm going to draw it a little bigger this time just so that we can see what's happening really clearly. So we've got this circle. It's perfectly round. And the idea is we know that the circumference of a circle, the distance all the way around the circle, is 2 pi times the radius. Well, the radius is going to be our unit of measure. So we're going to say the distance around the circle is 2 pi times whatever the radius is. So all the way around the circle, then, we're going to call that 2 pi radians, or 2 pi times the distance of the radius of the given circle. Well, if 2 pi is the distance all the way around, 1 pi would be the distance halfway around. And pi over 2 would be only a quarter of that. And so if we're counting by pi over 2s, we've got 1 pi over 2, 2 pi's over 2, 3 pi's over 2 at the bottom, and 4 pi's over 2, which reduced to 2 pi. Now, I guess you could also say 0 is a coterminal angle with this measurement on the right. From there, we can divide this up much the same way we did before. We're going to divide the pi over 2 into thirds. And this almost makes a clock. When I draw this, I often think about a clock, where you've got 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And granted, that counts the wrong direction, because we always count counterclockwise. But that'll give you all the spokes as we divide by 3. And so just kind of thinking off to the side here, if pi over 2 is that first quarter, and we divide it by 3 or find 1 third, each one of those spokes represents pi over 6. So each spoke is 1 pi over 6. So the next spoke then would be two of them, 2 pi over 6, which is going to reduce to pi over 3. The top is 3 pi over 6, which already reduces to pi over 2. The next one is 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. We'll come back and reduce in a minute. 6 pi over 6 is the same as pi. Then there's 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6 becomes the bottom, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and 12 pi over 6 is the 2 pi. Now, you should notice that all the evens are going to reduce. So the evens we're going to call pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. And that's just reducing those fractions. So we'll never actually say 8 pi over 6. We'll say 4 pi over 3. We'll always use the reduced version. 
Similar to what we did before with the degrees though, we're also interested in cutting right down the middle with an extra angle. And so with cutting in half, we originally had pi over 2, and we cut each of those in half this time. That's going to give us pi over 4. So we've got a pi over 4, 2 pi over 4 on the top, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4 on the left, which reduces to pi, and then 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, and finally the 8 pi over 4 becomes the right. This circle with angles measured in terms of the radius or in radians, you should be able to draw this circle very, very quickly. The sooner you memorize each of these key angles or are able to derive them quickly, the better off you will be. I always just remember that we're counting by pi over 6 or pi over 4 and count my way around the circle. So I didn't actually memorize it. I just count my way around. Some people prefer to memorize them all. Either way, we're going to use this circle a lot in this course. And the sooner you memorize it, the better off you will be. Now we're going to take much the same direction that we took before with degrees, this time just talking about radians. We're going to talk about coterminal angles again. We're going to take that same pi over 6 angle. Remember, that was the same as the 30 degree angle and do much the same thing with it. Instead of just going open to pi over 6, we're going to open all the way around to get a coterminal angle. Well, we were discussing that the distance around the circle is 2 pi with an extra pi over 6. So this is really saying pi over 6 plus 2 pi, which gets us around the circle. When I get a common denominator, 2 pi is 12 pi's, which means we've got 13 pi's over 6 as a coterminal angle. But again, we also have the option to go backwards. So if I go backwards, that's a negative angle. Again, we're looking at a pi over 6 angle, but this time we backed up the 2 pi. And so we subtract the 2 pi, or 12 pi over 6. 1 minus 12 is negative 11 pi over 6 gives us a coterminal angle. And so just like with degrees, we could add or subtract 360 degrees. We're now going to add or subtract one rotation of the circle, which is 2 pi radians. So let's do a couple examples of that. Let's start with an angle that's 15 pi over 4. Now, to get a coterminal angle, we need to subtract 2 pi. But to make this easier, let's keep the common denominator. So to get a common denominator of 4, we want to subtract 2 pi. 2 pi times 4 is 8 pi. And 15 minus 8 leaves us with 7 pi over 4 is our coterminal angle. And we should be able to count out 7 pi over 4. Remember, 4 are the quarters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There is the angle at 7 pi over 4, which is coterminal with 15 pi over 4. Let's try one more. Let's do negative 13 pi over 6. Well, again, we're going to adjust by 2 pi. Since we're negative, we're going to add 2 pi. But we want to have a common denominator of 6. So 2 times 6, we're adding 12 pi, which gives us negative pi over 6. Well, we're going to add another 12 pi. I'm going to change directions because I'm running out of room on the screen. Add another 12 pi over 6, add another rotation, and we end up with a positive 11 pi over 6. And that can help us see where this angle actually is. When we're counting by 6, those are the clock digits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pi over 6. 
which is coterminal with negative pi over 6. And you can almost see that negative angle going backwards. And coterminal with the negative 13 pi over 6 that we were working with. We can also work with arc length in radians. So let's take a quick look at arc length. Before, what we said with our arc length formula is we would do theta divided by the 360 degrees. Well, now all the way around the circle is 2 pi is equal to the arc length over the circumference, which is 2 pi times the radius. But what's nice about this formula is we can multiply both sides by 2 pi, because it's on both sides. And we get a better formula for arc length. Another reason why radians are better, it's the arc length divided by the radius. So if I have a radius of 5 feet and an angle of 5 pi over 6, visually what we're looking at, when we're dividing by 6, we're counting the spokes of the clock. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 6. That's over here. And the radius is 5 feet. We want to know how long is that arc length. Using our formula, we have theta. Our angle is 5 pi over 6 is equal to the arc length that we look for divided by the radius, which is the 5 feet. So we just have to multiply both sides by 5. And the arc length is equal to 25 pi over 6 feet. And now we have the arc length of the piece we're looking for. So we've got a way to measure arc length. And we've got a way to measure angles, both in degrees and in radians. It kind of begs the question, though, if it's two ways to measure the same thing, is there a way to, we'll call this letter C, convert between radians and degrees? Well, the answer is yes, we can convert. And again, we're going to use a proportion. The easiest way to think about this proportion is we're just going to do half of the circle in half of the circle. And because I can't use theta now, because theta talks about both degrees and radians. So I'm going to use r for radians and d for degrees. If we take the radians and divide by half the circle in radians, that's pi. If we take the degrees and divide by half the circle, that's 180. Those should both be equal to each other. That's our proportion. So if I've got 7 pi over 9 radians that I want to convert to degrees, we take our radians, which is 7 pi over 9, divided by half the circle, which is pi, is equal to degrees divided by half the circle, which is 180 degrees. What's nice here is the pi's can divide out. So we really have 7 ninths equals the degrees over 180. And we can solve for the degrees by multiplying both sides by 180. And 180 times 7 divided by 9 is going to be 140 degrees. So 7 pi over 9 is the same as 140 degrees. Let's do one where we go the other way. Let's take 240 degrees and convert it to radians. Again, we'll take the radians, which we don't know, divided by pi is equal to the degrees 240 divided by half the circle, which is 180. Well, we just can start. If I start reducing here, I can divide 10 off really quick. And then I could even divide top and bottom by 6. And that leaves me with 4 thirds. 
So r over pi is equal to 4 thirds. To get the radians, we just multiply both sides by pi. And the radians are 4 pi over 3. And we've converted between the radians and the degrees. So there's three formulas and two circles that we covered today that you need to know. The first is converting radians and degrees. That's a proportion. The second you should know is finding arc length in radians. The third you should know is finding arc length in degrees. And if you think about where they come from, your proportion should set up quite easily from those. The two circles you should know then are the circle in degrees. That's going to be very important. But more important probably is this new one, the circle in radians. This circle we are going to use constantly throughout the entire course. You should be able to at least be able to build it, if not have it memorized as the course moves forward. So take a look at some of the homework assignments. Practice some of those. Let me know if you have any questions. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.